Welcome back to 5 Minutes Learning, where we simplify business case studies for MBA students. Today, we're diving into a fascinating case on ethical leadership, centered around one of India's most admired business leaders, Ratan Tata, and the legacy of the Tata Group. Why is this case study so relevant today? Because, in a world driven by profit, ethical leadership stands out as a defining factor in creating lasting business success. Let's explore how Ratan Tata exemplified ethical leadership, the challenges faced by the Tata Group, and the powerful lessons you can apply to your own business careers. This is more than just history, it's a living, breathing example of how ethical leadership impacts business in today's global market. The Tata Group, one of India's largest conglomerates, operates in over 80 countries. It has touched millions of lives through its diversified businesses, steel, automobiles, tea, technology, you name it. But beyond profits and products, what truly defines Tata is its unwavering commitment to ethics. Under the leadership of Radhan Tata, the group reached new global heights while maintaining its core values of integrity and corporate responsibility. Tata's strict adherence to ethical practices is legendary. For instance, it's often said that, the Tatas don't bribe, a rarity in the highly competitive Indian market. However, like every great organization, the Tata Group faced serious challenges. One of the most significant was the 2G Spectrum scam in India in 2010, where Tata was unfairly drawn into a political and corporate quagmire. For a group known for its trustworthiness, these allegations shook its reputation, to make things more complex, Ratan Tata had already retired in 2012 and handed over the leadership to Cyrus Mystery. But in 2016, the Tata Sons board decided to remove Mystery, citing governance issues and a clash over the direction of the company. This was not just a leadership change, it was a test of Tata's corporate governance and ethical values. Faced with this dilemma, Ratan Tata was asked to step back in as interim chairman. His mission? To find a permanent successor who could restore the group's ethical standards and ensure business growth without compromising on values. So, how did Ratan Tata handle it? He stayed true to Tata's core principles. He led by example, emphasizing the importance of trust, transparency, and ethical leadership. Tata didn't bribe or take shortcuts, even if it meant losing certain business deals. In Ratan Tata's words, we have been disadvantaged repeatedly, but we will protect our values ferociously. Overview of the Tata Group In this video, we will break down how the Tata Group was built on the foundation of trust, integrity, and responsibility. We'll explore how ethical leadership under Ratan Tata made the group not only financially successful but also a symbol of ethical business practices worldwide. The Tata Group is a name synonymous with integrity, trust, and social responsibility. But what makes this business empire, which operates in over 80 countries, stand out as its unwavering commitment to ethical leadership? In a world where many companies prioritize profits over principles, Tata's approach offers a valuable lesson for future business leaders. Like you, the Tata Group was founded in 1868 by Jamset G. Tata with just 21,000 rupees. From humble beginnings, it grew into a massive conglomerate spanning industries like steel, automobiles, IT services, and consumer products. Tata's legacy of innovation started with India's first steel plant, Empress Mills, and extended to setting up iconic institutions like the Indian Institute of Science. But Tata's story isn't just about business, it's about values. Jamset G. Tata, the founder, believed that the community is not just a shareholder in the business, it's the very reason for its existence. This core purpose has guided the group through over 150 years of operations. Let's fast forward to Ratan Tata's leadership in the late 20th and early 21st century. Under his guidance, Tata became a global player, but ethical dilemmas also arose. For example, during the infamous 2G scam in 2010, Tata's ethics were questioned. Despite being dragged into this controversy, Ratan Tata remained committed to the group's ethical standards, even when it meant the company faced business disadvantages. Ratan Tata himself admitted that corruption in India was a major roadblock for businesses like Tata that refused to engage in unethical practices. He once said, if you choose not to participate in corruption, you leave behind a fair amount of business. 
Yet, Tata stuck to its principles. How did the Tata Group maintain its reputation in the face of such challenges? The answer lies in its ethical leadership. Ratan Tata introduced the Tata Code of Conduct in 1998, a set of ethical standards that all Tata employees must follow. This code emphasized integrity, honesty, and fairness in all business dealings. Even when the group faced setbacks, such as losing projects due to not paying bribes, Ratan Tata ensured that the company never compromised its values. In his words, we would like to keep the group ferociously protecting this one asset, that asset being the company's integrity. To make this more relatable, let's look at a current example. Consider the company Patagonia, known for its strong ethical stance on environmental issues. Like Tata, Patagonia prioritizes its values over profits. In fact, their mission statement is, we're in business to save our home planet. This example echoes Tata's philosophy that business exists to serve the community, not just shareholders. Both companies show that ethical leadership may come at a cost in the short term but builds long-term trust and loyalty with consumers. This is a valuable lesson for MBA students who will soon be leading organizations themselves. Let's talk about the business strategies that made Tata a global powerhouse while staying true to its ethics. Under Ratan Tata's leadership, the Tata Group expanded globally, acquiring brands like Jaguar Land Rover and Tetley T. But how did they balance aggressive growth with ethical values? The key was long-term stakeholder value creation. Tata focused on building trust with its customers, employees, and communities. This approach is seen in initiatives like Tata's affordable nano car project, which aimed to provide safe transportation for the common man, and in Tata Consultancy Services (TCS), which became one of the largest IT services firms globally. So, what can MBA students learn from Tata's story? The Tata Group shows that it's possible to be a successful business while staying ethical. You might face challenges, you might lose out on opportunities, but in the long run, sticking to your values pays off. As future leaders, it's essential to remember that ethical leadership isn't just about following the rules, it's about setting the right example for others, making decisions that benefit both your business and the wider community. And that's what makes Tata, and Ratan Tata's legacy, truly inspiring. Introduction to Ratan Tata's Leadership Challenges Ratan Tata a name synonymous with ethical leadership and innovation, took over the leadership of the Tata Group at a time of immense challenges. Many Tata companies were struggling, and his leadership journey was filled with critical turning points. Let's explore some key examples of these challenges. Turning around failing companies like Nelco and Central India Textiles, formulating the 1983 Tata Strategic Plan, and handling the industrial unrest at Telco. These events shaped the Tata Group's modern growth while preserving its core values. First up, the story of Nelco and Central India Textiles. In the 1970s, both companies were struggling. Nelco, an electronics company founded in 1940, faced severe financial issues. Central India Textiles, founded in the textile boom, was in a similar state. In 1971, Ratan Tata took charge of Nelco. Over the next few years, he managed to turn the company around, even showing profits between 1972 and 1975, wiping out some of its past losses. But the road wasn't easy. In 1975, the Indian government declared a state of emergency, causing demand to drop significantly, however, just when things began to improve, Nelco faced an internal industrial relations crisis in 1977, which led to strikes and lockouts. Despite these issues, Ratan Tata kept fighting to stabilize Nelco's operations. Similarly, Ratan Tata also took charge of Central India Textiles in 1977. However, the textile industry was going through a major recession, and despite his best efforts, Tata Sons eventually decided not to support the company further, leading to its voluntary liquidation. This experience, as Ratan Tata later recalled, taught him critical lessons about resilience and financial discipline. He said, and I quote, I don't think I could have learned as much the hard way as I did in Nelco. This kind of determination is what every MBA student should learn about leadership, sometimes, things don't go according to plan, but you must keep learning and evolving. Now, let's talk about the 1983 Tata Strategic Plan, 
a turning point not just for Ratan Tata but for the entire Tata group. When he took over Tata Industries in 1981, the company was practically inactive, with no significant business activities. Ratan Tata knew it was time to look ahead, he proposed a bold plan to enter new and emerging fields like microprocessors, telecommunications, advanced materials, biotechnology, and energy storage systems. These were the businesses of the future for India, according to him. While this plan faced resistance from senior directors who were afraid it would impact their current business areas, Ratan Tata moved forward with calculated steps. His vision materialized in the form of several new businesses, including Tata Honeywell, Tata Telecom, and high-tech drilling services, among others. By 1995, these companies had generated 5.87 billion rupees in sales. This case highlights an important lesson in strategic leadership for MBA students, pushing for innovation, even when there's resistance, can pay off if done thoughtfully. The next major challenge Ratan Tata faced came in 1988 at Telco, now known as Tata Motors. Telco was one of the most important companies in the Tata Group. But the company was struggling with internal tensions, specifically from trade unions. A significant event occurred in January 1989 when workers went on strike at the Pune plant, triggered by the dismissal of a union leader, Rajan Nair. This led to chaos, 22 managerial personnel were attacked and stabbed in retaliation. Ratan Tata's leadership was tested here, and he stood firm. He adopted a multi-pronged approach to address the situation. The strike ended after months of negotiations and police intervention. But rather than just focusing on productivity, Ratan Tata realized the importance of improving worker management relations, his efforts paid off. Telco saw remarkable improvement in its production, sales, and profits post-strike. By 1991, Telco became the largest private sector company by sales in India. The key takeaway for MBA students here is that leadership is not just about handling crises. It's also about rebuilding trust and relationships. Telco's turnaround post-strike is a classic example of balancing ethical leadership with operational excellence. Restructuring the Tata group of companies, focus, synergy, and growth. Under Ratan Tata's leadership, the Tata Group went through one of the most significant transformations in Indian corporate history. Faced with a diverse set of businesses, Ratan Tata understood that to survive in a competitive global market, it was time for restructuring, making tough decisions about which businesses to focus on and which ones to exit. So, what exactly drove the restructuring of the Tata Group? Ratan Tata established clear criteria. First, could the company rank in the top three in its industry? Second, could it compete globally? And finally, was it profitable? These factors helped shape the group's future, ensuring only the most competitive and profitable businesses were retained. This move was essential for Tata's long-term strategy in an increasingly globalized world. One of the boldest moves under Ratan Tata's leadership was the decision to exit businesses that no longer aligned with the group's strategic vision. Companies like ACC, Lakme, Tata Oil Mills, and even Tata's joint ventures with big names like IBM and Mercedes-Benz were let go. This wasn't an easy decision. These businesses had been part of Tata's legacy, but they weren't contributing to the vision of making Tata a globally competitive group. This bold step showed Tata's commitment to long-term growth rather than holding onto emotional ties with legacy businesses. Another crucial part of the restructuring was creating a unified brand identity for the Tata Group. In the 1990s, while the Tata name was respected, it wasn't seen as a strong brand globally. To fix this, Ratan Tata introduced a uniform brand logo, a stylized T inside a blue oval. This branding was consistent across all group companies. Not only did this improve recognition, but it also allowed Tata companies to reflect a shared commitment to trust, integrity, and leadership. It gave Tata companies like Tata Steel and Tata Motors a stronger, more cohesive identity in both Indian and global markets. However, using the Tata brand was not automatic. Ratan Tata introduced the Tata Brand Equity and Business Promotion Agreement, which required companies to meet strict criteria, including adherence to the Tata Code of Conduct. 
They also had to pay a royalty fee based on their revenue or profits. Interestingly, companies like Titan, Trent, and Taj Hotels didn't use the Tata name directly, but they still embodied the same principles. This agreement ensured that only companies maintaining Tata's high ethical and business standards could carry the Tata brand forward. By the end of the 1990s, Tata's restructuring strategy began to bear fruit. In 2010, the Tata brand was valued at a staggering $11.2 billion, ranked 65th globally by Brand Finance. This success wasn't just about profit, it was about creating a brand that stood for trust, ethics, and reliability. The Tata Group became a shining example of how a diversified conglomerate can adapt to modern business challenges through focused restructuring and ethical leadership. Radin Tata's leadership shows us that ethical decisions and bold strategies can coexist, driving not only profitability but also creating lasting value for stakeholders. Expanding beyond India. Vision of global growth. Under Radin Tata's leadership, the group made several landmark acquisitions that transformed the company's global presence. Let's look at some of the key acquisitions that not only increased Tata's global footprint but also brought cutting-edge technologies to the group. In 2000, Tata acquired Britain's Tetley Group Limited for $450 million, making Tata a leader in the global tea market. Next came the acquisition of Brunner Mond Group in 2005, Jaguar Land Rover in 2008 for $2.3 billion, and Chorus Group in 2007 for £6.7 billion, which became part of Tata Tea, Tata Chemicals, Tata Motors, and Tata Steel, respectively. Radin Tata's overseas expansions weren't just about making profits. They were strategic moves to acquire advanced technologies, build research and development capacity, and contribute to the infrastructure of both Tata and the countries where they invested. For example, Tata Motors' acquisition of Jaguar Land Rover allowed them to access cutting-edge automotive technology, while Tata Steel's acquisition of Chorus gave them access to world-class manufacturing and research capabilities. One of the unique aspects of Radin Tata's global strategy was his commitment to ethical leadership. In an interview, he explained that Tata always did extensive homework to ensure that any company they acquired shared Tata's culture and values. Tata was not willing to compromise on ethics, even for profitable deals. If an acquired company did not align with Tata's practices, the deal wouldn't go through. This is a crucial lesson for MBA students. Always consider how business decisions align with your organization's values. Tata's global acquisitions didn't just benefit the company. They also had a significant impact on the countries they operated in. From the luxury Jaguar Land Rover cars in the UK to the iconic Tetley T in over 40 countries, Tata's global impact was undeniable. For example, Tata Steel's acquisition of Chorus helped it become the world's fifth-largest steel producer, and Tata Motors turned Jaguar Land Rover around, making it one of the most successful luxury car brands globally. Radin Tata's global strategy shows us that when businesses expand with a focus on long-term growth, ethical leadership, and innovation, they can achieve success not only in their home markets but also on the global stage. Conclusion Upholding values amid global expansion. The Tata Group has always been more than just a business empire. It's known for its unwavering commitment to values like trust, service to the community, and nation-building. Radin Tata's philosophy was clear, Tata wasn't just in business for profits, they were in it to make a meaningful impact, reducing disparities in a developing country like India. As Tata expanded its footprint globally, Radin Tata emphasized that the group's values and ethos would need to be carried forward, whether in India or abroad. Would Tata be able to replicate its mission of nation-building and community service on a global scale? One of the hallmarks of Radin Tata's leadership was his relentless focus on social good. Under his stewardship, Tata's philanthropic trusts invested in areas like rural infrastructure, water access, nutrition, and research. Tata believed that corporate success should go hand-in-hand -hand with social responsibility. This focus on ethics and community service is something MBA students should take away as a lesson. While profits and growth are critical, the true measure of a company lies in its ability to improve the lives of the communities it touches. Radin Tata exemplified ethical leadership by never compromising on these values.
As Ratan Tata stepped down as chairman, one of his biggest challenges was finding a leader who could carry forward the Tata legacy. In 2017, Tata named Natarajan Chandrasekharan as the new executive chairman of Tata Sons, a decision that ensured the group would remain committed to its core values. Chandrasekharan's appointment was symbolic, not only because he was the first non-Parsi to lead the group, but also because of his commitment to ensuring that the Tata ethos and ethical standards would remain the foundation of its global operations. Radhan Tata, in his media statement, expressed confidence that, Chandra, would take the group to new heights while protecting its values at all times. As the Tata group moves forward, the road ahead is filled with opportunities and challenges. While global expansion continues, Tata will need to stay true to the values that shaped its success, focusing on ethical practices, community impact, and sustainable growth. The Tata Group's story is far from over. With leaders like Natarajan Chandrasekharan at the helm, the group is poised to continue its journey of ethical leadership, innovation, and global impact. For those of you looking to build careers in business, remember the lessons of Ratan Tata, ethical leadership, social responsibility, and long-term vision will always be the keys to success. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the Tata Group's inspiring leadership story. If you found this case study insightful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to 5 Minutes Learning. Let us know in the comments, how do you plan to lead ethically in your career? See you in the next video.